1.34 p.m. in the afternoon here at the uh, Rota Mayor's Office Conference Room. Um, at this time, before I ask everyone to please uh, rise for a moment of silent prayer, again, uh, I ask that we remember uh, those victims of the wars in Europe, and that we pray for uh, peace, over there and everywhere else, um, and that we also pray for safety and safe return for our members of the CNMI uh, residents who are called to uh, uh, who called to respond to the uh, the um, the situation over in uh, near uh, uh, Europe. So with that, I, I ask everyone to please remember this. At this time, the chair recognized the clerk to please uh, call the roll. Senator Cruz? Here. Yeah. Senator De Leon Guerrero? Here. Yeah. Senator Hoku? Here. Yeah. Mr. President? Yeah. Senator King Neighbors? Yeah. Senator Manglonia? <laughs> Senator Manglonia? Senator Kirigua? Senator Sablan? Gayet. Mr. President, I'm sorry. Senator Santos? Here. Mr. President, all nine members are present. With nine members present, we have a uh, quorum to conduct this meeting. And let the record reflect that uh, Senators Hokuk, Manglonia, Neighbors, and De Leon Guerrero are appearing in this session via zoom portal zoom platform as allowed in our rules so with that uh, this time the chair recognizes the floor leader thank you mr president and before we move on with today's order of business i'd like to offer a um, suspension motion and this is a motion to suspend rule three section three of the official rules of the senate and in compliance with the open government act to amend today's agenda the motion is to suspend the official rules of the Senate to accept any communications that may have may may have been posted after the call in accordance with the o, OGA. And this, Mr. President, members, is in reference to Standing Committee Report 22-68, 22-69, and 22-70 to be placed under item M of today's agenda. So moved, Mr. President. There's a motion for the suspension of rules as requested by the floor leader for the placement of uh, the uh, Senate Standing Committee report, uh, as mentioned by the floor leader, and it's been seconded. Discussion? Ready? Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Senator Cruz? Yes. Senator De Leon Guerrero? Yes. Senator Hoku? Senator Hoku? Senator King Neighbors? Senator King yes. Neighbor. Senator Manglonia. Yes. Senator Kiruga. Yes. Senator Sablan. Okay. Senator Santos. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Mr. President, all nine members voting yes. With nine members voting yes, the suspension of rules and the inclusion of the set uh, committee report as mentioned by the floor leader is hereby approved. Moving on under uh, item B, uh, under public comment. Uh, this is the portion of our meeting, our session today, where we allow members of the general public to comment on any of the items before the Senate uh, order of business for today's uh, meeting or session. So again, any public comment is open. The floor is open for public comment to uh, share your uh, testimony with regards to any of the items before the Senate in today's order of business. The 
let the record reflect that there's no public comment. Reading and approval of the journal. Uh, recognize uh, floor leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Under item C of today's agenda, we have two journals um, for action and adoption. And the first journal is Senate Journal 22-19. First day, first special session dated February 28, 2022. Mr. President and members, I move for its adoption. Motion for the adoption of Senate Journal 22-19 uh, for adoption, uh, offered by the floor leader, and it's been seconded, discussion. Ready? All those in favor of the motion for the adoption of Senate Journal 2219, please say aye. All those opposed, say nay. Aye. 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 Senate Journal 22-19 hereby adopted. Floor leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Our last journal for adoption is Senate Journal 22-20, second day, third regular session, dated March 3rd, 2022. Mr. President and members, I move for its adoption. In a motion offered by the floor leader for the adoption of Senate Journal 2220. Uh, and it's been seconded. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion for adoption of Senate Journal 2220, please say aye. All those opposed, say nay. Aye. Senate Journal 2220 is hereby adopted. Item B, messages from the governor, clerk. Mr. President, we have six. 22-173-178. Any comments from the member? Communications from the judiciary? We have one judiciary communication, 2207, uh, FY2023 budget request. Comments? Ready? Communication from the heads of executive department? None, Mr. President. Communication from the House? None. Communication from the Senate? We have 10. 22, 113 to 122. Um, any comments from the members? Privilege, Mr. President. Um, recognize Senator De Leon Guerrero. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to make a comment on Senate communication number 22-120. So I am aware of your memo dated today regarding the dischargement of the Special Committee on Impeachment. I appreciate the opportunity to go on record, which is of the highest importance regarding matters related to the impeachment rules. It is unfortunate that this Senate body is caught in an ex parte tangled mess of its own impeachment rules adopted by the Impeachment Joint Committee on February 25th, 2022, and subsequently passed on March 3rd, 2022, with three voting no. The mess did not stop, but instead went on with the violations under impeachment rule 18, attendance decorum ex parte communication. One did not go far by analyzing the time stamps on impeachment document number 22-16, which is also stamped as Senate communication number 22-123, and the impeachment document 22-19 addressed to the impeach official. Mr. President and colleagues, notwithstanding any other case laws, not having to do with US civil rights and due process violations, this Senate body need not have to follow or obey the Nixon versus U.S. rationale, which I premise on the powers of the CNMI Constitution and the powers enumerated by the state doctrine, separation of power between state and the federal government. Mr. President and colleagues, I also want to wish to bring up Title I, Division 9, subsection 9901 legislative declaration that the legislature finds and declares that all public commissions, boards, councils, and committees, subcommittees, departments, divisions, offices, and all other public agencies of this Commonwealth exist to aid in the conduct of the people's business. It is the intent of this chapter that their actions be taken openly and that their deliberations be conducted openly. The people of the Commonwealth do not yield their sovereignty to the agencies which serve them. The people in delegating authority do not give their public servants the right to decide what is good for the people to know and what is not good for them to know. The people insist on remaining informed so that they may retain control over the instruments that they have created. The provisions requiring open meetings and open records shall be liber liberally construed and the provisions providing for exceptions to the open meeting requirements and open records requirements shall be strictly construed against meetings and non-disclosure of records, against closed meetings, mind you. Mr. President, impeachment rule 18 has, in my opinion, been violated and must be dealt with under the same breath 
and authority addressed in the Senate communication number 22-120 pursuant to Senate Rule 16, and in the spirit and intent of Public Law 8-11, Government Ethics Code Act of 1992, as amended by Public Law 828, where Acting Governor Benjamin, Benjamin T. Manglonia signed this act into law on January 22, 1993, and I quote his words from his transmittal letter to Senate President Juan S. Demapon and House Speaker Thomas P. Villagomez. We need this law to protect our people and those of us who are entrusted with the destiny of our people, who elevate us to high positions of responsibility. A code of ethics is like an insurance policy for our people. It protects them from, from graft, corruption, and conflicts of interest. At the same time, it protects the honest, appointed, and elected officials from serious, unfunded, allega unfounded allegations of corruption and wrongdoing." End of quote. Mr. President, the people of the Commonwealth deserves absolute respect and decorum of its Senate members. Us, who are elected to represent the people in their best interest, not our personal or aligned interest that is of no benefit to the people of our Commonwealth. If we must be reminded, here it is, and quoting from President Lincoln, government of the people, for the people, by the people. A government that does not stand for first and foremost, the interest of the people is not democratic. Lastly, Mr. President, and despite what was reported on today's paper, that no amendments were offered, the truth is, had the documented amendments with judicious intent been accepted, as shown in Senate Journal 22-20, offered by myself and Senator Paul Manglonia on March 3rd, 2022 Senate session, this mess could have all well been avoided. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> Thank you, Senator De Leon Guerrero. Any other member? Mr. President, I want to be recognized. Recognized, Senator Manglonia. Um, I want to comment on um, Senate Communication uh, 22117, uh, establishing the Special Committee on Impeachment. Mr. President uh, and members, it's been almost 70 days since the article of impeachment was given to the Senate. However, it's no surprise that there has been no forward movement on the impeachment process. Since day one, I have been advocating for fairness. Obviously, May please have fallen on deaf ears because here they, Senator Carl King Neighbor only chose to disclose the very shocking fact of Viola Lipuzzo's involvement in reviewing the impeachment rules after I brought this, this scandalous ex party communication to light. This cast enormous doubt on the impartiality of this body in conducting an impeachment hearing. After the Senate leadership vehemently announced at the March 3rd session with its very body and the viewing public that the committee worked hard on these rules and they do not represent the governor, Senator Neighbors' action along with the special committee tell us otherwise. In fact, there are jarring accusations of this Senate body being involved in a cover-up. The special committee knew that Viola Lipuzzo reviewed and provided input on the impeachment rules at the time the rules were voted on at the March 3rd session. This is a grave issue. This is it's very fortunate that this important fact came to light prior to the commencement of the impeachment hearing. Further, we cannot ignore the involvement of Joey McDullet in this whole process. Like the all Alifuzo, Joey McDullet is not an employee of the LB. Our cinema constitution clearly states, and I quote, the bureaus shall provide all required services to the legislature in connection with the duties and responsibilities during sessions and committee meetings, end quote. What's more is that the joint committee chose to forgo public comment at the joint committee meeting, and then this body limited the time allowed by our rules for public comment at the February 28th session. This is very uh, disturbing. Further, this body has been contending that the House of Representatives should not be paid how we run our house as we, separate, as we are a separate house of the legislature, yet our impeachment rules command who will represent the house and present its case at the impeachment proceedings while we let the sitting governor pick and choose his army of lawyers to defend him. I am pleased with the first step that we have taken, which is in your memo this morning, uh, abolish the special committee and the referral of the article impeachment over to the full Senate body. 
This is what our constitution mandates and what the people of the Commonwealth has been asking for since day one. Now there's still the issue of unconstitutional Senate impeachment rules. Do we scrap the rules? Do we revisit the very rules that uh, the sitting governor drafted and adopted while he was a senator in the 80th legislature for the uh, former governor Pito impeachment? Let's do this the right way. We should allow the House to choose who they want to prosecute their case. This way, we can examine the full extent of their case and make our base judgment based on their presentation. All the people are asking for is justice, not war. And in this very seat that I'm occupying, I'm asking for justice for the people of the Commonwealth. Mr. President and my dear colleagues, I know we can do better. This is my seat. President Oraga. Thank you, uh, Senator Manglonia. Uh, yeah, the chair now recognizes uh, Senator Carl Neighbors. Uh, thank you, Mr. President and members. First off, I would like to start uh, this discussion uh, with this ex parte communication. Again, we cannot go on making up our own facts as we go along. The the digital footprint and what was what was submitted, first of all, was submitted also to the legal counsels. So there was nothing that, that we were necessarily hiding. Second of all, this was my my communications personally to to Ms. Alfuzo. So this happened prior to her being the governor's counsel and furthermore us adopting the rules. Secondly, I want to make very clear that what was changed was two days on each side with regards to the, the, the submission of evidence. So that's how it pertains to the impeachment in the Senate and how it pertains to the impeachment in the House for a total of eight days. Note that none of the, none of the minority members brought an issue with this. All their issue was when the amendments came was with regards to the, the impeachment happening in a committee. Okay. Secondly, please tell me if there's no ex parte communication, what 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 rule are you citing now? Again, how can it be ex parte communication if by the rule it didn't exist? So moving forward, it's 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 amazing to me that again we're here, right? We're talking about we're talking about unconstitutional, we're talking about unethical, we're talking about if I had a dollar for every time Senator Paul and, and, and House Majority said this, I promise you the retirement will be filled with it. We would have no way, we, we would not need to look for money to fund the retirement. This uh, is baffling to me how we spend so much money and resources between the House investigations and now we're here at the doorstep. No, furthermore, in response to in response to the the rules that they wanted to adopt in the beginning that was the then drafted by then governor uh, senator torres there were no parameters set again to when the when the rules uh, the records were were to be submitted so what, how would we sit here how could we now put any kind of leverage and force the house to give us the documents in a timely fashion secondly while the rules were being drafted the house tried to give us 2700 pages lord knows how that, how that was going to be made up so we would have to now sit, sit here and sift through all of this information and try to provide an impeachment before election uh, or, 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 or not, maybe. So, so <laughs> I, I, again, I, I, the one thing I will agree with Senator Paul is the people are tired. Instead of, instead of working through and doing this the impeachment process, we're going we're gonna to keep on trying to create, fact, create facts, create laws that don't exist. Instead of trying to figure out what we're going to do after our part, we're, we're still here. We are still here in the same position, and that and and I, I'm 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 completely amazed. Three years. Imagine that. How many people? How many people were called called in at the, in that in the House hearing in the JGO? Of course, they don't have money to hire an attorney. So of course, now who's going to pay that bill? The governor, the government. We're 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 how many days in, and the House refuses to participate in this impeachment process. And we sit here on the doorstep of the impeachment, and where are we? They say they have their that we 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 have some kind of obligation. Or tell me the tell me the rule. Don't say don't say it's unconstitutional. The judiciary is the only branch of government government that can say it's unconstitutional. So please tell me tell me tell me who, where, in what process is this now a mandate for the Senate to give them the opportunity to choose their representation? I I, I would love to see this rule. I yield back. Thank you. Um, I would like to uh, uh, move further uh, with the session as um, the chair would like to uh, ask the members uh, to uh, move over to item M of reports of standing committees. Um, 
But before I do that, I recognize Senator Santos. Thank you, Mr. President. And once we're done with the adoption of these committee reports, I'd like to revert back to a Senate communication because I too would like to place something on record. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Senator Santos, for your understanding. Okay, so we go to item M under reports of standing committees. And with this, um, I recognize the floor leader to offer the appropriate motion to uh, entertain the standing committee report from the EAGI. Thank you, Mr. President. Under item M of our today's agenda, reports of standing committees. Our first standing committee report is standing committee report number 22-68, um, reference to the executive appointment of Ramon S. Bossa to serve as a member of the Public Utilities Commission representing the third senatorial district. Mr. President and members, I move for its adoption. A motion been offered by the floor leader for the adoption of standing committee report number 22-68, reporting on the nomination of uh, exec, um, sorry, Ramon S. Bossa to serve as a member of the Public Utilities Commission representing the 3rd Senatorial District and has been seconded under discussion. I recognize the, floor, the uh, chairman of the EAGI, Senator Francisco Cruz. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Mr. President, your standing committee on executive appointment and investigation are ready to report uh, standing committee report number 22-68 in reference to executive appointment of Ramon S. Bossa to serve as a member of the Public Utilities Commission representing the 3rd Senatorial District, Saipan. Mr. President, your committee on executive appointment and investigation to which was referred the appointment of Mr. Ramon S. Bossa to serve as a member of the Public Utilities Commission representing the 3rd Senatorial District begs to leave to report as follows. After review and consideration of testimonies provided, your committee recommends the confirmation of Mr. Ramon S. Bossa's appointments to serve as a member of the Public Utilities Commission representing the 3rd Senatorial District, Saipan. Pursuant to Rule 8, Section 5 of the Official Rules of the Senate, it is the duty and purpose of your committee to report to the Senate for legislative action pertaining to the appointment of Mr. Ramon S. Bossa to serve as a member of the Public Utilities Commission representing the 3rd Senatorial District. Your committee has examined all pertinent documents relating to the executive appointment of Mr. Ramon S. Bossa's overall credentials to serve as a member of the Public Utilities Commission, PUC. In summation of all written and oral testimonies provided to the committee, there are no written testimonies in support of the appointee, two oral testimonies in support of the appointee, of which one hard copy of the testimonies stated were submitted on the date of the hearing and no written or oral testimonies in opposition of the appointee. Additionally, your committee stated several recommendations, issues and concerns to the appointee that are included in this report. And based on the overall assessment of Mr. Bowser's credentials, experiences, testimonies, goals for the agency and other relevant issues considered, your committee is convinced that Mr. Bowser has the qualifications and leadership skills necessary to serve as a member of the Public Utilities Commission. The public hearing was conducted on March 21, 2020, at the Senate Chamber of the Honorable Suspi Mamnas Memorial Building in Capitol Saipan. And during the hearing, certain recommendations, issues, and concerns were raised for the appointed to address and look into when confirmed as a member of the Public Utilities Commission. And in conclusion, all required documents in conformance with Rule 8, Section 5 of the Official Rules of the Senate have been submitted to your committee for review and consideration. And based on the submission of pertinent documents and testimonies, your committee concludes that the appointment of Mr. Ramones Bassa to serve as a member of the Public Utilities Commission is in accordance with 4, with 4 CMC, subsection 8403. Therefore, your committee consents to the confirmation of Mr. Ramon S. Bassa to continue serving, to serve as a member of the Public Utilities Commission to represent the 13th Senatorial District. Again, I ask the uh, full body of the Senate to support Standing Committee Report Number 22-68. Thank you, Mr. President. This is Masi, uh, Chairman Cruz. Uh, any other member before I call the roll for the adoption? 
Clerk, can you please call the roll for the adoption of Standing Committee Report 2268? Senator Cruz? Yes. Senator DeLeon Guerrero? Yes. Senator Hoku? Yes. Senator King Neighbors? Yes. Senator Mangloña? Yes. Senator Kirigua? Senator Sablan? Again. Senator Santos? Yes. Mr. President? Again. Mr. President, all nine members voting yes. With nine members voting yes, Standing Committee Report 22-68, uh, reporting on the appointment of Ramon S. Basa to the Public Utilities Commission, representing the 3rd Senatorial District of Saipans, hereby adopted. Floor Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Our next report on reports of standing committees is Standing Committee Report number 22-69, in reference to the executive appointment of Oscar Patrick Kirigua to serve as a member of the Public Utilities Commission, representing the 1st Senatorial District. Mr. President and members, I move for its adoption. Motion has been offered by the floor leader for the adoption of uh, Standing Committee Report 2269, reporting on the uh, appointment of Pat Oscar Patrick Kituwa to serve as a member of the Public Utilities Commission representing the first senatorial district of Luta of Rota. And it's been seconded. Discussion. Again, I recognize uh, the uh, chairman for EAGI, Senator Francisco Cruz. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this is the second. Uh, Standing to report that your committee on executive appointment and government situation already 2%. And this is standing committee report number 22-69 in reference of executive appointment of Oscar Patrick Kirugua to serve as a member of the Public Utilities Commission representing the first senatorial district, Rhoda. Again, Mr. President, your committee on executive appointments and government investigation to which was referred the appointment of Mr. Oscar Patrick Kirua to serve as a member of the Public Utilities Commission representing the first senatorial district begs to leave to, to report as follows. And after review and consideration of testimony provided, your committee recommends the confirmation of Mr. Oscar Patrick Kirua's appointment to serve as a member of the Public Utilities Commission representing the first senatorial district. Pursuant to Rule 8, Section 5 of the Official Rules of the Senate, it is the duty and purpose of your committee to report to the Senate for legislative action pertaining to the appointment of Mr. Oscar Patrick Hirugua to serve as a member of the Public Utilities Commission representing the first senatorial, senatorial district. Your committee has examined all pertinent documents relating to the executive appointment of Mr. Oscar Patrick Kidugas over credentials to serve as a member of the Public Utilities Commission, PUC. In summation of all written and oral testimonies provided to the committee, no written testimony in support of the appointee were received by the committee. Four oral testimonies in support of the appointee, of which one hard copy of the testimony stated were submitted on the date of the hearing and no written or oral testimonies in opposition of the appointee. Additionally, your committee stated several recommendations, issues, and concerns to the appointee that are included in this report. And based on the overall assessment of Mr. Kidigua's credentials, experiences, testimonies, goals for the agency, and other relevant issues considered, your committee is convinced that Mr. Kidigua has the qualifications and leadership skills necessary to serve as a member or the Public Utilities Commission. The public hearing was conducted on March 22nd, 20, 2022 at the conference hall of the mayor's office, Tatatsu Roda. And during the hearing, certain recommendations, issues and concerns were raised for the appointed to address and look into when confirmed as a member of the Public Utilities Commission. In conclusion, all required documents in conformance with Rule 8, Section 5 of the Official Rules of the Senate has been submitted to your committee for review and consideration. And based on the submission of pertinent documents and testimonies, your committee concludes that the appointment of Mr. Oscar Patrick Kidugua to serve as a member of the Public Utilities Commission is in accordance with 4CMC, 
subsection 8403. Therefore, the committee consents the confirmation of Mr. Oscar Patrick Kirigua to serve as a member of the Public Utilities Commission to represent the first senatorial district. Again, I ask the full body of this Senate to support Standing Committee Report Number 22-69. Thank you, Mr. President. This is Masi. Chairman Cruz, uh, any other member? Uh, recognize Senator Santos. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. And, uh, <clears throat> Director Kiriqua, thank you for your interest to serve us again on the PUC board, a board that has been previously, uh, a board that you have previously served and um, has been stagnant for uh, the last several years. With you and those other uh, appointed and confirmed, this board will be reactivated. I currently have no question, uh, Director Kiruka, to ask, but there is a pressing issue that uh, requires the board's immediate solution for our farmers and our ranchers here in Rhoda. There has been uh, several recycled legislations after legislations for a special water rate for our local farmers and ranchers. Unfortunately, at the Sinai of the last or for the last four legislatures, none of these bills were enacted into law. And so we ask your indulgence and the rest of the PUC board to please review uh, this matter. And if a solution can be reached at your level, then our ranchers, our local ranchers and our farmers would greatly appreciate it. However, if it will require for our legislation to be passed, then we ask that the author of this previous and uh, pending legislation um, take the board's recommendation and uh, perhaps meet with our chairman and the committee on the PUTC, who happens to be the floor leader of the Senate, and, and um, put these, you know, consolidate all these recommendations so that we can pass a bill. Uh, and uh, uh, what's this? Our, our farmers would uh, avail of that uh, special water rate for the island of Rhoda. And so uh, that's all for now, uh, Mr. President. Are you this is Marcia, Senator Santos. Any other member? Thank you. Uh, okay, so with that, uh, I recognize the clerk to call the roll for the adoption of uh, Standing Committee Report 2269. Okay. Senator Cruz? Yes. Senator DeLong Guerrero? Yes. Senator Hoku? Yes. Senator King Neighbors? Yes. Senator Mangloña? Yes. Senator Kirigua? Uh, Mr. Kirigua is a very close uh, relative of mine. Therefore, I abstain. Senator Sablan? Hungan. Senator Santos? Mr. President? Hungan. Mr. President, eight members voting yes, one abstention. With eight members. Uh, voting yes and one abstention. The standing committee report of uh, 2269 is hereby adopted. Floor leader. Thank you, Mr. President. The last standing committee report on today's um, calendar is standing committee report number 22 70 from your committee on executive appointments and government investigations in reference to the executive reappointment of Agueda Toves Quiroga to serve as a member of the Marianas Visitors Authority Board of Directors representing the first senatorial district. Mr. President and members, I move for its adoption. A motion offered by the floor leader for the adoption of Standing Committee Report 2270 uh, from uh, Executive uh, Appointment and Government Investigation on the reappointment of, uh, reporting on the reappointment of Agueda Toves Quiroga to serve as a member of the Marianas Visitors Authority representing the island of Rota. It's been seconded and under discussion. I recognize the chair for EAGI, Senator Francisco Cruz. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this is the last uh, committee report that your standing committee are ready to present this afternoon. And this is standing committee report number 22-70 in reference to executive appointment of Ms. Ag uh, Agida Tobis Kiriwa to serve as a member of the Marans Business Authority Board of Directors representing the first senatorial district, Rota. Mr. President, your committee on executive appointment and investigation, to which was referred the reappointment of Ms. Agida Tobis Kiruga to serve as a member of the 
Maranas Visitors Authority Board of Directors, representing the First Senatorial District, begs leave to report as follow. And after review and consideration of testimonies provided, your committee recommends the confirmation of Ms. Agida Tobis Kiduga's reappointment to serve as a member of the Maranas, Maranas Visitors Authority Board of Directors, representing the First Senatorial District. Pursuant to Rule 8, Section 5 of the Official Rules of the Senate, it is the duty and purpose of your committee to report to the Senate for legislative action pertaining to the reappointment of Ms. Agida Tobis Kirugua to serve as a member of the Maranas Visitors Authority Board of Directors representing the First in Authorities. Your committee has examined all pertinent documents relating to executive appoint reappointment of Ms. Agida Tobis Kirugua overall credentials to serve as a member of the Maranas Visitors Authority, MVA, Board of Directors. And in summation of all written and oral testimonies provided to the committee, there are four written testimonies in support of the appointee, five oral testimonies in support of the appointee, of which two hard copies of the testimony stated were submitted on the date of the hearing. And no written or oral testimonies in the opposition of the appointee. Additionally, your committee stated several recommendations, issues and concerns to the appointee that are included in this report. Your committee further finds that the, 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 employer, the employing restriction pursuant to 4CMC, subsection 2111B has been waived by Governor Torres pursuant to the authority granted I take that back, uh, Mr. President. Uh, I can. Oh, the. Uh, I apologize, uh, Mr. President. That 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 is correct. Uh, Torres pursuant to the authority granted to him under 1 CMC 2901 A. Okay, now can I ask for a short recess, Mr. President? This short recess, sir. Okay, we're back in session and the floor, uh, Senator Cruz still has the floor. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President, for that uh, understanding. Just trying to uh, qualify from the legal counsel whether this paragraph is uh, in order. Again, let me, I'll, I'll repeat on that uh, second paragraph of uh, page two. Mr. President, your committee further finds that em employment restriction pursuant to 4CMC, subsection 2111B, has been waived by Governor Rob de Lunger Torres, pursuant to the authority granted to him under 1 CMC, subsection 2901A. Your committee agrees with the governor's action to waive this statutory provision re referencing the employment restriction based on the limited pool of potential appointees to deliver rep represent the first senatorial district. And based on the overall assessment of Ms. Ms. Kirugua's credentials, experiences, testimonies, goals for the agency, and other relevant issues considered. Your committee is convinced that Ms. Kiruga has the qualification and leadership skills necessary to serve as a member 
of the Maranas Visitors Authority Board of Directors. The public hearing was conducted on March 22nd, 2022 at the conference hall of the mayor's office here in Tatatsuk Roda. And during the hearing, certain recommendations, issues, and concerns were raised, were appointed to address and look into and confirm as a member of the Maranas, Maranas Visitors Authority, MDA, Board of Directors. In conclusion, all required documents in conformance with Rule 8, Section 5 of the Official Rules of the Senate have been submitted to your committee for review and consideration. And based on the submission of pertinent documents and testimonies, your committee concludes that the reappointment of Ms. Agueda Tobis Kiruwa to serve as a member of the Maranas Visitors Authority Board of Directors is in accordance with 4 CMC, subsection 2111. Therefore, your committee consents the confirmation of Ms. Agueda Tobis Kiruwa to serve to continue serving as a member of the Maranas Business Authority Board of Directors to represent the first senatorial district. Again, I ask the full body of the Senate to support Standing Committee Report Number 22-70. Thank you, Mr. President. This is Masi, Chairman Cruz. Uh, any other member you would like to offer? Uh, I recognize Senator Santos. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, <clears throat> Director Kiruwa, we would also like to thank you for your acceptance to continue serving as our board uh, member to MVA. We are also confident that you will continue to execute your fiduciary duty and responsibility in accordance with the CNMA laws. Uh, for your information, the Rota Legislative Delegation had its session last Monday, and it was recommended during the course of our session to set a date to meet with the M MVA board and management concerning an issue that is relevant to all of us as it affects our traveling public and that of our tourists. The issue is regarding the recent requirement of the customs and border protection clearance for direct flights from Rhoda to, to, to Guam. And so a temporary quick or quick fix has been suggested, but that will only translate to the increase of uh, air for, airfare cost uh, that we all know will ultimately and financially burden the traveling public and our tourists. And so with that, we look forward to our meeting with the MVA board and management and ask you know, MVA to help us in this regard. Uh, this is it, Mr. President, I you for now. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Santis. Uh, I recognize Senator Paul Maglone. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, um, I raised this concern in a, in a letter to uh, CPA because uh, Star Marianas Air has um, written a letter since uh, December of last year uh, indicate, indicating their concern to start Guam, uh, Rota Guam uh, direct flights. And they have not gotten any uh, concrete response from CPA or MBA. Uh, and this is very alarming. Uh, CPA's response to my letter uh, regarding uh, accommodating the direct flight so that we can restore that. It's very expensive for the people of Rhoda, the travelers, especially those for medical reasons, uh, to go to Saipan first, then go to Rhoda. Uh, it's like paying double when Stamaranas wants to start like immediately. And uh, the response that I got back is uh, I have to call a certain person whose phone number was given to me. I appreciate that, but whose role in our government? Is it MBA? Is it CPA to promote and market the islands? I think it's a report from CPA saying that they have met with Guam Airport Authority, met with Star Marianas, and uh, we're ready. But instead, it appears like since December, nothing has progressed uh, in this effort. And uh, hopefully, it can be a meeting uh, this week to uh, to really, you know, sit down and, and just find a solution. Because I don't believe that there's no solution. Presently, if a person is going to a charter a flight, even a charter flight to Guam, they have to bring, he has to pay first the transportation of the CBP, the immigration official, from Saipan, bring them to Rona, and just to board six people or seven people. And then at the end of the day, they have to fly him back again to Saipan. So those are expenses that uh, were not there before the pandemic was not required. And 
very unreasonable. I requested that maybe a remote clearance uh, by CBP could be uh, applied where, you know, we can have a trusted CPA official or custom official to be on Rota and remotely clear them. And uh, you can even say that no one can be cleared if there is no passport, U.S. passport. But this or another option that uh, I've been telling uh, people is that we can actually, when the plane lands in Guam, we can have them land at the international airport. If we can just get the cooperation and support of Guam Airport Authority so that when whatever time they arrive from Guam, they have to go through the U.S. immigration uh, because there is no concern by CBP when the person is flying from Guam to Malta. They, they do not have any problem with that. It's only upon arrival on Guam. So I think CPA uh, and MBA can can resolve all this in one day if they just put their heads together and and and, uh, and try to help uh, the traveling public. Uh, it is very tough when when now the cost to fly to uh, to between the islands is uh, uh, almost uh, two hundred uh, sixty uh, long trip and 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 to go to Guam another more than two hundred sixty. So I hope that. Uh, CPA and uh, MBA become serious uh, on this matter. Any other member? Ready? Ready? Uh, clerk, please call the roll for the uh, adoption of standing committee report. Senator Cruz. Senator DeLeon Guerrero. Yes. Senator Hoku. Yes. Senator King Neighbors. Yes. Senator Manglonia. Yes. Senator Kirigua. Again, uh, Ms. Kirigua is a very close relative of mine. Therefore, I abstain. Senator Sablan. Ngan. Senator Santos. Yes. Mr. President. Ngan. Mr. President, eight members voting yes, one abstention. With eight members voting yes and one abstention, the uh, Standing Committee Report 2270 from the Executive Appointment and Government Investigation Committee reporting on the reappointment of uh, Ms. Uh, Augira Tovitskitua to represent the MBA, representing the island of Rhodes, hereby adopted. Uh, and, uh, at this time, uh, yeah, I, was, I would like to uh, call for a short recess uh, to... Uh, I have some time with the two nominees that are here today to join us, witness their confirmation. Thank you. Option of committee reports, uh, both you, uh, Mr. Oscar Kirigua, uh, has been deemed confirmed by the Senate, but I believe uh, you still need to go through the House. I stand corrected. But you, with uh, Ms. Uh, Algida, um, you are uh, hereby uh, confirmed, officially confirmed. Thank you. Thank you. We're on recess. Hi.
We're back in session uh, before we of standing committee report. I do want to read a statement on one of the appointee uh, representing PUC saying uh, with reference to a uh, standing committee report 2269 Oscar Patrick Kituga. The House had already uh, confirmed his uh, nomination so therefore is uh, is whole and is uh, ready for uh, for uh, the disposition of the swearing in. So, so I just wanted to re retract my earlier statement and confirm it with this uh, clarification. So with that, uh, moving on to item I, communications from the Washington delegate. None, Mr. Communications President. Communications from, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, item J, unfinished business. None. Prefiled initiatives, local bills and resolutions. And at this time I, I recognize uh, Senator Edith leong -Guerrero. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to um, go on the record that I have pre-filed Senate Joint Resolution Number 22-10, requesting Governor Ralph De Leon Torres to reassess the exam status of the CNMI in participating in the disadvantaged business enterprises pertaining to the Department of Transportation Financial Assistance Program. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Senator Edith Leon -Guerrero. Uh, introduction of bills, initiative, local bills, and resolutions. Anybody, any member? The chair has one. Uh, the Senate resolution number 2220. The Senate resolution to amend rule 4, section 2 of the official rules of the Senate. Primarily on uh, rule 4 under quorum and attendance, section 2. Um, on line 14. Everything remains the same. It's the same in addition, but to add on, uh, um, striking out is physically present in the cinema and um, in, uh, include uh, notifies the Senate clerk in writing at least 24 hours before the scheduled session time and the president allows such participation. And if uh, there's no objection from the members, I wish to put this on today's bill calendar. I mean, a resolution calendar. Thank you. Reports of special conference committee. None. None. Resolution calendar. Um, before I recognize the floor leader, uh, on reference to Senate Joint Resolution 2208, I um, would like to uh, request the patience and the uh, indulgence of uh, especially the author, uh, Senator Leon Guerrero, and also request the Chair of Fiscal Affairs and members to uh, convene uh, a meeting with Secretary of Finance uh, and to get more clarity uh, in terms of the, the uh, structure on how to go about this uh, request. It is a good uh, um, intent and, and, and it's, I'm sure it's going to benefit the, the entire uh, public of the CNMI, but at the same time, we also want to get the proper guidance from the Secretary of Finance, who is the who is tasked to, to administer this. So I appreciate the the, <clears throat> the members' uh, patience and uh, respectfully ask the chairman to please call the uh, Secretary of Finance for an audience over at the Senate uh, in, in the earliest possible time. So with that, uh, send, uh, recognize the floor leader for the to offer a motion for the Senate resolution number 22. Uh, recognize Senator Hoku, Chair. Yeah, just for your, the members' uh, information, uh, I have communicated this with the Secretary of Finance regarding uh, Senate Zone Resolution 22-08, as well as I have discussed this with the author of the said resolution. And uh, I have a schedule. Uh, uh, a meeting with upon his return uh, from Mobile Island trip uh, to meet with the committee to engage into the uh, 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 this resolution, uh, where in the Secretary of Finance have no objection. It's just a matter of putting some uh, criteria as to how uh, uh, this five hundred dollars for fuel voucher be distributed. And one way that we're looking into is 
taxpayers that uh, you know taxpayers that have been paying their taxes uh, will be uh, uh, one of the uh, mechanism to to move this uh, resolution forward. Mrs. Marcia, so, chair. Uh, I will be meeting with the committee on the Secretary of Finance return from his island trip. Thank you. Okay, thank you again, uh, Chairman Hukuk. Um, um, ready? Uh, floor leader, I recognize for the to offer a motion for uh, consideration on Senate Resolution 2220. Thank you, Mr. President. And at this time, I'd like to offer a motion that we um, adopt Senate Resolution 22-20 to amend Rule 4, Section 2 of the Official Rules of the Senate. So moved. Motion offered by the floor leader for the adoption of Senate Resolution 2220 and has been seconded. Okay, uh, I, I wish to call a roll uh, to for to dispose of this resolution. Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Senator Cruz. <clears throat> yes. Senator De Leon Guerrero. Senator Hoku. Oh, Mr. Bishop. Senator De Leon Guerrero. Senator Hoku. Uh, Mr. President. We're calling a roll, uh, Senator De Leon Guerrero. Did you have a question? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, I think we're having some connection problems here. Um, just before I cast my vote on, on the um, Senate Resolution 2220, if I may ask the question, uh, Mr. President, regarding the 24 hours notification um, to the Senate clerk, which is not an issue for me. I, I, just, I just wanted to get more clarification on um, being the president to allow such participation. Um, I'm just wondering why is that important? I can answer that. Um, the reason why we deploy the origin of the origin of uh, uh, allowing the appearance via Zoom, uh, commonly known, simply because of all the uh, first the the onset of the pandemic when they allowed us to to uh, not allow us to participate. Uh, uh, in person uh, to counter the the uh, the uh, spread, so we kind of took that uh, into consideration, and we want to be ahead of the the, the curve. However, uh, I do wish to uh, encourage the in-person participation of all members at any other time. Understanding fully that the reasons for not participating in person uh, is, is justified, but I believe that uh, the more interaction in person that we get in within this uh, August body is more uh, appropriate for the, the public in general in terms of uh, having our meetings and sessions. So there's no uh, uh, other reason than not to... Uh, uh, have the clerk uh, at least inform the the uh, presiding officer uh, with regards to this particular uh, proposal. That is the the intent. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Can I just have uh, ask a simple question? Um, does this mean that uh, the uh, first the member does not have to be in the Commonwealth because the provision that the member be in the Commonwealth uh, is stricken out. So uh, I want to be absolutely clear on that, that I think there is a concern if a person is outside the Commonwealth and that person is allowed to participate in a Zoom because if we don't clarify that, this new rule will authorize such. So is that the intent? No. Thank you, uh, Senator Manglonia. Uh Okay, on the your amendment, uh, it says on Section 2, electronic attendance. A member uh, physically present in the CNMI, that's the new amendment to it, an addition, may appear, participate, and vote in the Senate session 
electronically using a telephone video or electronic means provided that the member and what is stricken out is physically present in the cinema. And then the new provision is notifies the, the Senate clerk in writing, da, da, da. So the, the, the question before, before the, the sponsor of this uh, uh, resolution is simply what, what, what we did is we just placed it up on the, in the beginning of the sentence. I hope that answers you. your question, Senator Paul. Uh, yes, it does. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Senator Santos, recognized. Yes, I just have one question. Um, <clears throat> may we know what is the term turnaround time of response to the member requesting to participate uh, via online? Within 24 hours in writing, at least 24 hours before the scheduled session in time and the president. Within a minute that you send, you I would not know. Uh, I state to uh, grant uh, information because the clerk would, would, would inform me right okay. away or whoever is the presiding okay. officer moving thank forward. You, thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thanks for your participation in this uh, uh, very good discussion with regards to this particular rule. Any other member? Are you sure? You ready? Clerk, please call the roll. Senator DeLeon Guerrero? Yes. Senator Hoku? I guess this is my third yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Senator King Neighbors? Yes. Senator Manglonia? Yes. Senator Kiduga? Senator Sablan? Again. Senator Santos? Mr. President? Again. Mr. President, all nine members voting yes. If my members voting yes, Senate Resolution number 2220 is hereby adopted. Thank you. Um, there being no uh, other items on resolution calendar, uh, the chair would like to go straight to petitions and we'll leave the, uh, the legislation on, on calendar as it appears right now. And under Q, petitions, memorials, and miscellaneous communications. We have two, Mr. President, 2283 and 2284. Any comments, none, announcements? <clears throat> Adjournment, floor leader, can you please uh, offer a motion to adjourn this session? Thank you, Mr. President. And at this time, I'd like to offer a motion that we adjourn today's Senate session subject to the call of the President. A motion offered by the floor leader for adjournment. We hear a second. All those in favor of the motion to adjourn this Senate session, please say aye. All those opposed, say nay. Aye. Carries. Senate session.